Okay, today I have another repair video. This is a power supply out of a vintage 480Z computer. These were fairly simple machines built back in the early 1980s. And uh, this doesn't belong to me, it was sent to me for repair. Um, I don't know exactly what's been done to it. Um, I know the owner has replaced a few parts and he has sent me a bag of bits and pieces. So uh, we'll start by doing the basics. I hope to get this uh, up and running, but um, uh, we'll see how far we get. Um, he has replaced the main uh, switching transistor. It's not bolted to the heat sink, so I need to uh, be mindful of that in the testing. I don't want to overheat it. Uh, and in fact, if it turns out that the original one that he has sent um, is still viable, I'll probably put that one back in. Uh, I do have the schematic for this. This is uh, readily available. And uh, this is a fairly typical uh, switching supply for the time. Um, there's a few complications with it, um, but it essentially it uses um, positive feedback from a winding on the transformer to drive the switching transistor. So it kind of uh, forces itself uh, to switch on, then it forces itself to switch off. And the energy is transferred from the uh, incoming uh, supply side. It's is completely isolated, so we've got an optocoupler and the transformer, of course, to transfer the energy. So we have uh, mains coming in. It's rectified and smoothed. Um, it's chopped by the main drive transistor. That drives the transformer and then there are various windings on the secondary side and as I say we've got an optocoupler um, to keep us uh, fully isolated so this provides the feedback path to uh, affect the required regulation. Uh, we also have uh, local regulators on the uh, isolated side uh, but as I say, I don't know what the current uh, state of this is, so I'm going to start by doing some basic checks. So before I try and power this up, I'm going to go through with a meter and just um, check some of the um, components. I'm not going to take any off the board at the moment, and that can make testing a bit difficult because obviously uh, a lot of it will read a short circuit because of the presence of the transformer. Um, energy is transferred from one side of this to another um, purely in the uh, flux uh, transitions of the transformer and so when the transistor turns on it passes current through one of the primaries there's a, another winding that's used to uh, force the transistor to turn fully on and so the transistor will stay turned on as long as there is flux building in the transformer uh, and then once that um, finishes rising and uh, the transistor has kind of done its job then it will turn off and it will stay off until all the energy stored in the flux in the transformer has been used by the secondary side at which point the transistor will turn back on and the cycle will repeat so the upshot of this is that the uh, switching frequency for a, a supply like this is very variable and i believe this particular one it can be anything from 25 kilohertz up to around 100 kilohertz. Um, now it can be a lot less than that if there's uh, a fault with a supply of course. So if you're one of the people that's complained about the uh, whining noises that the supplies make in previous videos that I've posted, um, you may not want to watch this one. Um, these are all supplies, they make noises, so if you're not into um, whining noise, whistling noises, smoke and the occasional explosion then my channel is perhaps not for you. Uh, so be warned this may make uh, a lot of noise when I power it up. So before I do that I'll go through the meter. I won't do it on camera. I'm just going to go through and buzz uh, as many things out as it seems to make sense to. Uh, I know that the owner's powered this up so I'm not too concerned about uh, plugging it in and uh, applying power to it but I will do it through the uh, vary act so I can uh, ramp up the voltage fairly slowly. So I get this tested, get back on camera and um, if I don't find anything uh, we'll continue by powering it up. Okay, uh, I didn't really find too much. I found a few things that uh, didn't seem quite right but nothing major that um, I felt should prevent us from powering this up. Um, I, it's obviously not going to work and um, what I'm really looking for initially is the uh, cycling of the primary side. 
So looking at the schematic, I want to make sure that uh, this side of the uh, supply is actually oscillating and um, I have checked these diodes and I'm not going to jump straight in and check the voltage across these capacitors. I did um, buzz them out and they seem fine but uh, what we're looking for here is um, oscillation of the uh, primary side and as importantly I don't want uh, to see huge currents um, so that's the first thing we'll check before we go any further. So we'll power it up. I'll keep it on the current. I don't know how clearly the current meter on this particular variac shows up. It seems a bit um, intermittent on, on my camera. Um, it's fine in real life. I can see it fine, but for some reason the camera can't pick it up. But I will be keeping an eye on that. And uh, we shouldn't be drawing more than perhaps uh, 50 or 100 milliamps. If it goes much over that, then I'll power it back off. There is a thermal cutout, but it's quite slow to react. So uh, I don't want to blow anything up unnecessarily. So we'll power this up. Uh, also, I've um, taped over one of the loose connectors that goes to a fan, I believe, in the machine, but it has got uh, live mains coming on uh, out of it, so I didn't want to uh, uh, electrocute myself for uh, no real reason. Okay, so I'll start to increase the voltage. Now, it's, this is not an all or nothing supply. It should start to ramp up, and the uh, primary side should start to oscillate uh, fairly quickly. We shouldn't need to get much over. 60 or 70 volts for it to start up. So uh, I'm listening out for the uh, typical whining noise. Okay, so the primary current started to rise, it's gone back down again. That's a good sign, that means it is probably oscillating. I think I can hear it, but um, as I said, if it, the current just continues to rise, then it's a sign that. Uh, there's something very wrong with the primary side. So we'll keep going up. This is a 220 volt supply, so uh, looking for any smoke or sudden rises in current. And we can now hear that uh, it is struggling to supply power. So uh, at least the primary side is oscillating. That's um, a good sign. It means that uh, chances are the main transistor uh, is working, doesn't guarantee that the entire thing is working. Uh, but what we need to look at now is to see if any of um, this energy is being transferred to the secondary side. So all I'm going to do now is put a meter across um, one of the smoothing capacitors on the secondary side and see if we're getting any output. Um, the owner said there's no output whatsoever coming from the uh, connector output, they said it's all zero so uh, we'll work our way through, we'll check that ourselves later, but uh, we'll start by just seeing if we're getting anything on the secondary side at all. Okay, so I have the meter hooked up. It's hooked across one of these capacitors. This is on the 5 volt rail, but uh, you could use any one of these. All I'm really looking for is to see if there's any uh, energy being transferred from the primary to the secondary side of the system. And if there is, we should see voltage building on this. If there's a dead short, then we won't see anything at all. And as I say, it should start up fairly fairly quickly. It shouldn't We shouldn't need to get to the full 240 volts before we see anything. And straight away, we're seeing the voltage beginning to rise. And not only that, but it actually seems to be regulating to a certain extent as well. Um, which means that the entire feedback path may be working. What I'm going to do now is just check that there isn't any voltage coming out of the uh, output connectors and uh, just to make sure that um, the system is completely dead. So I'll just uh, transfer where we're measuring from. Okay, so we're looking now at the uh, 5 volt rail and this is the input to the 5 volt fuse. So that's the input to this fuse. Now one of the things with this supply is the regulation, the feedback, the main feedback regulation loop is only from the 5 volt rail. Also bear in mind we have a crowbar protection thyristor on the uh, output of the 5 volt rail. So one of the things I found when I buzzed this out is this fuse is blown. And so what we're going to find is that the voltage input to this is going to rise um, quite rapidly way beyond 5 volts because the regulation is actually down here 
in this circuit and so this feedback loop through this circuit, through the optocoupler and back to the primary side is affected only on the 5 volt rail and if this feedback isn't working then what's going to happen is the 5 volt rail is going to just keep rising up to the point where the SCR is triggered and that's going to block the fuse and then you won't get any regulation and of course you won't get any 5 volt out either at that point because the fuse will be blown. Um, so what we can do here of course to avoid that is just not turn the uh, supply uh, on the primary side up too far and just see if we're getting anything. But uh, we already know we're getting voltage going into the fuse because the meter is reading something and these capacitors are still charged up. Um, so what I can do is go to the other side of the fuse and this is most likely just blown. And as we can see it is indeed uh, open circuit. So I'll replace this fuse and then we'll slowly ramp up the um, supply voltage and see how the supply responds. It could be uh, that the optocoupler isn't working and the output voltage is going too far and just blowing the fuse. So I'll get a new fuse put in and we'll give it a try and see what happens. Okay, I've got the meter connected to the 5 volt rail. I've replaced the fuse and what we'll do now is slowly ramp up the uh, mains voltage input and see what the 5 volt rail does. And we can see it is rising, it's now 2.6 and we are indeed getting regulation. I'll keep going up Okay, we are getting some buzzing from the supply but it is completely unloaded so that's not that surprising. So I'll turn this back down and we'll check the other rails and make sure they're working fine as well. Okay, so now we're on the plus 12 volt rail. Fine, I'll test them fully once we've got some load on them and finally we'll look at the minus 12 volt rail. So again that looks fine. What I'll do now is I'll hook it up to some electronic loads um, I'm just going to try the original transistor and see if that's uh, working and uh, if it is I'll put that back in and um, we'll go from there. Uh, if not then what I'll do is I'll fit this and bolt it to the heatsink. I can't fully test it under load until I get this um, on the heatsink because it will just overheat and uh, could damage it. Um, it would be nice to put the original back in then at least he'll have a spare. Um, but I'll get that done off camera and then uh, we'll give it a full load test but uh, unfortunately it looks like this may have rectified the problem. Okay well unfortunately as you can see the supply is now fully functional. I have put the original chopper transistor back in, I took out the replacement and this is now uh, bolted to the heatsink with some thermal paste. I've cleaned the underside of the board so unfortunately not a particularly interesting repair. Uh, the main issue seemed to be the 5 volt fuse was blown. Now I suspect what may have caused this, I mentioned earlier I'd found a few things that um, weren't uh, measuring quite right and one of those was there was a dry joint on one of the divider resistors on the, um, the feedback regulator IC. So what could have happened is if we lose regulation on the main loop then the 5 volt output will climb above the uh, maximum allowable limit and that will trigger the crowbar protection on the output and that will blow the fuse and then you don't get regulation because there's no longer a 5 volt rail to affect the regulation and um, 
I suspect that may well have been what was happening here, that uh, it was forcing the uh, supply into a state that it didn't like, and that blew the fuse, and then um, it's a case of uh, trying to get the thing back online again without the fuse continuously blowing. Um, I f also found the, the because of the way the this supply works, there are various uh, critical timing uh, elements within the primary, and some of those are to do with the way that the two modes of operation, basically the on and the off uh, current for the main transistor, operate. And we had an issue with uh, a capacitor open circuit on the primary side and um, it's basically with this one down here and what it causes to happen is the um, there's an overlap between the way that the transistors that are supposed to be controlling the uh, main chopping transistor actually operate so it's part of the feedback loop and it rather than it feeding back properly and allowing the transistor to turn on and off as it should do cleanly um, it wasn't doing those overlap on uh, those two phases of the supply. And uh, what you'll notice now is where we had around 100 milliamps in this kind of standby mode before with no load, we're now getting just 40 milliamps. I'm not quite sure if you can see on the display. Um, but we're now at 246 volts input and we're getting uh, about um, less than half of the current that was drawing before, which is obviously uh, far better and it's also stopped making that horrendous um, whining noise that it was making. You might still be able to hear it whistling, but uh, that is just the nature of uh, these supplies. Uh, I have done a full power test. I won't bother boring you with that on the video. It's the same as uh, you've seen me do before. I'll just hook up the electronic loads, run up to full power, and uh, leave it for a while. I left this one for 35 minutes, so that seemed fine. Nothing was getting hot. Again, I was using the thermal camera. Seems fine. And uh, so that is it. Uh, unfortunately, a bit of a, uh, a boring repair, but um, that is uh, sometimes the way they go.